Okay, so continuing here um, with roots, um, we have some two more intense roots here for you. So let's see what you can come up with. Um, 567, right? 567. Any idea on a common number that might go into that? Well, if it ends in a 7, my guess is it's divisible by 7. So I have them be right. 7 and 81 works. So it's the square root of 81 and the square root of 7. And what is the square root of 81? It's one of those that are in common that I told you to remember. That's a 9. So I have a root 7 and a 9, so your answer is 9 root 7. Over here, first thing that comes to mind for me, very first thing, it has a 0, so I know it's divisible by 10, and I'm right. It's 10 and 8. This I can divide into two prime numbers of 10 and 5, right? Because ten, 2 times 5 is 10. Over here, 8, the first thing that comes to mind is 4 and 2, because 4 times 2 is 8. 4 is not a prime number, but it's one of those I told you to remember, because square root of 4 is 2. So, really, I have a root 2 and a root 2. Well, root 2 times root 2 is another 2. So, really, I have 2 times 2 times root 5, and 2 times 2 is 4, so your final answer here is 4 root 5. And yes, you could have done this in one step because we could have separated it into root 16 and root 5. And the square root of 16 is 4. So we would have had it done in one step. Alright, so solving these. This is like saying 7 times x squared. So I have to get the x by itself. So the first step is to get rid of that 7. So I'm going to divide by a 7 on both sides. So when I do that, the 7's cross out, so I have an x squared left over, and 63 divided by 7 is 9. The opposite of squaring something is square rooting it. So when I square root both sides, these cancel out, so all I have left is an x, and the square root of 9 is 3, because it's one of those that I told you to remember that's in common. However, whenever you're solving an equation and you square root an item, you get two answers. You get the positive and negative. So there's two answers to that. So positive and negative 3 is correct. Over here, it's 5 times x squared. So I would divide by 5 to try to get x by itself. When I do that, I end up getting x squared equals 25. Opposite of squaring something is square rooting it. So when I square root both sides, that's all gone. So I have an x. And the square root of 25 is 5, so plus or minus. So I have plus or minus 5 as my answer. OK, to get a number by itself again here, um, that's multiplication. But before I do that, we have to move the numbers and get all the numbers onto one side. So subtraction, the opposite of subtraction is addition. So I add 48 to both sides. That means these are gone. So I have a 4 x squared equals 16 and 48 is 64. Alright, so since it's 4 times x, I divide both sides by 4 so I can get x all by itself. So I get x squared equals 64 divided by 4 which is 16. And the square root I have to square root both sides, right? Because it's a square. It's the opposite of a square to square root. So the square root of 16, another common one I told you to remember. That is 4, but remember, whenever you square root an item, you get plus or minus. So there are your two answers, plus or minus 4. On this side, it's 2 times x. We need to get the x by itself. So let's get all the numbers onto one side. So I add 5 to both sides. They cancel out. So I have 2x squared equals 8. Since it's 2 times x to get x all by itself, I divide both sides by 2. So I get x squared equals 4. Since it's x squared, the opposite of a squared is a square root. So it's x equals, and the square root of 4 is another common one I told you to remember. That's 2. And whenever you're solving equations with roots, you get two answers, plus and a minus. All right, so let's take a look at the next set of problems here. 
Okay, so once again, just like the last one, 4 times x squared minus 110 equals 34. We've got to get all the numbers on the one side, so I add 110 to both sides. Oops. Add 110. Man, I'm not getting really good at this, am I? Those all cancel out. I got a 4x squared equals 144. It's 4 times x squared, so I divide by 4 on both sides. So I get x squared equals 144 divided by 4, which is 36. I square root both sides, and it's one that I told you to remember, right? x equals plus or minus because we square rooted it, and 6 because it's a common one I told you to remember. Um, square root of 36 is 6. To get all the numbers on one side here, I need to add 95 on both sides. So 85 plus 95 is 180. So I get 5x squared equals 180. To get x by itself, I need to divide by 5 on both sides. So I get x squared equals 180 divided by 5, which is 36. And it's the same exact answer to the last problem, x equals plus or minus 6 as the answer. Okay, um, some of these are getting a little more intense, but still not difficult nonetheless. I need to get all the x squareds on one side and all the numbers on one side. So here's what I'm going to do. So I can keep it positive, I'm going to add an x squared to this side. This way I can keep them positive. So this is gone. So I have a 4 equals 2x squared, and an x squared is 3x squared, and I have a negative 5. So since this is a minus 5, let's get all the numbers on the one side. So I add 5 to both sides. I get 9 equals 3x squared. Since 3 times x, I divide by 3 to get 9 divided by 3, which is 3. So I get 3 equals x squared. I square root both sides, and square root of 3 is simplified. So I can just keep my answer as a square root of 3, but remember, whenever you are solving for x, it's plus or minus with a square root. So there's two answers, plus or minus 3. Over here, to get the numbers by itself, I would subtract 1 on both sides. 1 third x squared equals 32. Whenever you have a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. So I multiply by the reciprocal. So I get x squared equals 32 times 3, basically, which is 96. So I have to square root 96. Now, the reason I'm erasing all this is the square root of 96 isn't a common one. So we have to think of numbers that go into that. Well, to me personally, since it ends in a 6, I'm guessing 6 is what it's divisible by. So 6 and 16 works. All right. So I know square root of 16 is 4. Great. OK. Square root of 6, I can simplify into root 2 and root 3, but does it get me anywhere? I have two different roots. So no, I don't want to do this because the whole concept is to simplify it so that you have a number. Well, I have a number. I don't want two or three roots behind it. So the answer is 4 root 6. However, because I'm solving 4x, it is plus or minus. Remember, when you're doing this, you want one number and one root, or just one number, or just one root. I don't want an answer that looks insane, something like this at the end. That's just stupid. Okay, You don't want something that's really long. So that we don't want. You just want one number, one root, or one number and one root together. Okay, so um, if you have any questions or concerns, um, please let me know.